what a privilege it is to share God's word with you today. God's word, the Bible says, is alive and it gives life. And so when we receive it, God can do amazing things in our hearts. And so would you bow your heads with me and pray and say, God, speak to me. Would you do that right now? Just say, Father God, speak to me through your word. Thank you, Father. Thank you that you're here with us, Lord Jesus. We are gathered in your name. And when we gather in your name, you are in our midst and you are in our hearts. We love you and we worship you. And we're rejoicing today, Lord, of how awesome you are, how wonderful you are, how holy you are, how great you are, how miraculous you are, how you change hearts, how you take broken people like us all and heal us and set us free and make us your sons and daughters. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. We adore you and we worship you. Please, Lord, by your spirit, speak through me to your praise. In Jesus' name, amen. So, friends, today I want to speak to you from a passage um, that our Lord speaks about. And it's about entrance into heaven. Entrance into heaven, which is all about how do I have eternal life? Now, but the background to this passage that Jennifer just read to us, Jesus here is preaching his most famous sermon, the most powerful sermon of all time. And you can find it in Matthew 5, 6, and 7 chapters. It's the best sermon ever. And I'm just going to take a part of that sermon and preach on it uh, this morning. And our Lord is speaking to thousands of people. Thousands of people are gathered to hear the great teacher teach them about the kingdom. And so our Lord Jesus speaks about our heart attitude. What sort of attitude we have and should have. He speaks about hatred. He speaks about adultery. He speaks about divorce, about love. He speaks about how to pray how to fast, speaks about wealth, what to do with your money. He speaks about judging others, how we should judge and not judge. And then he speaks about the two ways in life. There are only two ways in life. He says one is narrow. That's the one that is faith in Jesus Christ and following Jesus Christ. He said, that's a narrow way. But if you believe in it, it leads to life. He said, there's the broad way where most people go on it. That's the way that I'm not on. And he said it leads to death. And then he concludes his sermon with this passage that we just heard read. The most powerful passage on entrance into life. The most important question that you and I need to know is not how much money we should earn. Or who should marry. Or where we should fly. Or where, what holiday. Or what else or what else. The most and the best and the most important question that you and I need to know is where will I spend eternity? How do I have eternal life? And Jesus answers this question. And let's look with me in verse 21. Jesus says to the crowd, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. The issue here is entrance into heaven, entrance into eternal life now and later on for all eternity. That's what Jesus is talking about. And Jesus says, it's not the person who calls me Lord, Lord, that will have eternal life. What? Yes. It's not the person who just says Lord, Lord, that will enter heaven. And it's not the person who says, I'm a Christian or I believe, just empty words. These words will not lead you to heaven, Jesus says. It's far more than that. Jesus says in another passage, many come to me with their words, but their heart is far from me. So God is interested in what? Your heart, your life, not just what you say, but what you live out. And so Who will enter heaven? Well, Jesus says it. Let's hear it. He says, it's not the one who calls me Lord, Lord, but 
It is he who does the will of my father. It's about doing the will of my father in heaven. Not about doing my will or your will or somebody else's will. It's about doing what? God's will. Friends, a lot of people live life thinking they're pleasing God, doing what they want, how they want, when they want. It's not about that. It's about doing the will of God. It's about doing things God's way, not my way or any church way. It's about God's way. So who will enter heaven? It is he who does the will of my father. The Bible is very clear about what the will of the father is. You can find it as you read the word of God. But let me give you three things. Clearly, the Bible says, is his will when it comes to to entrance into eternal life, to having eternal life. Number one, it is to believe that the Lord Jesus, God the Son, died for your sins on the cross and paid for your sins and rose again on the third day. That's the only way your sins can be forgiven, can be paid for. It's the only way that you can have eternal life. It's by trusting in Jesus to save you and not yourself or anyone else. Number two, it says... What is the will of the Father? The Bible tells us it is to repent from living in sin and following Jesus as our Lord. Friends, repent. You know what repent means? It means you're going the wrong way and repent is to turn and go the Jesus way. Not your way, not somebody else's way, not even the church's way. The Jesus way. Jesus said, I am the way the truth, and the life. No one enters into heaven except through me. No one comes to the Father except through me. It's repenting, turning from living in our sin and our way and living the way of the Lord as the Lord of our life. That's the second thing that is the will of God. And the third thing, it is to have a personal relationship with Jesus. Listen to this. God is not a distant God. Our God became man and dwelt among us To what? To have relationship with us. He doesn't want to be from a distant God is watching you. He wants to live in your life. He wants to be part of your life in everything. He wants to do life with you in the good and the bad and the hard and the easy and the joy and the sadness. And so the true believer who enters life is the one who has a relationship with Jesus Christ as their Lord, who walks with him and talks with him and includes him in their life. Friends, that is what is the will of God regarding eternal life. And that's what Jesus is calling all to. Now, Jesus continues, verse 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name and done many miracles? And I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you evildoers. Pretty powerful words. But that's the truth that will set us free. What is Jesus saying here? Pretty heavy words. Depart from me. You never want on judgment day when you die and go up to be with the Lord. To hear Jesus say, depart from me. And friends, you can do something about it now. So that you don't hear those words, depart from me. Let's look at what he's saying. Our Lord is saying that on that day, what day is that? It's the day of judgment. The Bible says it is appointed unto man to die once and then the judgment. There's no reincarnation. You die once and then the judgment. You appear before God. The moment you die, you appear before God and he will decide where you go. And so... On that day of judgment, he is saying that many will say to him, Lord, we should enter heaven. We, we should be able to be in there because, you know what, we've, we've prophesied in your name. You know, we've, we've taught about you. We've preached about you. Uh, we've done miracles. We've cast out demons. And, and the list can go on. I've been a good person. I've done this and that. And, uh, but Jesus says... Depart from me, you evildoers. I never knew you. Now, why would Jesus say that? Now, please don't confuse Jesus with Santa Claus. 
Jesus is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is the creator of heaven and earth. He is where angels and demons bow before. He's an awesome God. And yet he is the most loving, loving Savior who died to save you and me. But listen to this. Why would Jesus not let them into heaven? Well, firstly, because these people trusted in their own religious good works. What they did for God, not what God did for them. They trusted in what they did for Jesus, not what Jesus did for them to save them from their sins. This is like a lot of people today who think that by going to church, by giving money, uh, by being a nice person, not hurting anyone, uh, not committing adultery, you know, just being a good person, and I'm sure you will get to heaven by doing that. Well, that is completely wrong. That's not what the Bible teaches. That's not what Jesus teaches. You see, people think by just being nice and doing good things and doing religious things even, that they, get, they can get into heaven. At the same time, they live in sin. They live their way. They believe in what they want, and they do what they want, and they think, well, well I'll do some good things here and there, and it should get me up there, right? No. It doesn't work that way. You can't bribe Jesus. He says it's not by doing those things. The second reason why Jesus did not let them into heaven is found in the words, I never knew you. Please listen to these words. Jesus said, I never knew you. Does Jesus know you? Do you know Jesus? Really know Jesus? Not about Jesus. Do you know him in a real relationship where he is your Lord? He says, I never, I never knew you. Which means that you did not belong to me and you do not have a relationship with me as your Lord. These people didn't know Jesus. And he was a distant God to them. He was someone they did things for but didn't have relationship with. Jesus said this powerful passage in John chapter 10. He said, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them. They follow me, and I give them eternal life. Can you see the difference here, friends? My sheep, what do they do? They hear my voice. And guess what? I know them, and they follow me. Can you see that? They follow me. They hear my voice. They follow me. I know them, and I give them eternal life. Would you say you hear his voice and you follow him? Would you say you're a sheep or a goat? Because a sheep will follow. A goat will do its own thing. And God is calling us to hear his voice and follow him. And that's how he will say, I know you. Because you follow me. Verse 24. Jesus says, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them. Listen to this. Whoever hears these sayings of mine, my teaching, and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. It did not fall, for it was founded, what? On the rock. Wow, what a beautiful, powerful passage here. Here Jesus is saying that the person who obeys my teaching, let me tell you what I think of him. The person who follows me, the person who obeys me, who does what I say, he is a wise person. She's a wise woman, a wise man. You know why? Wisdom is in following Jesus. Wisdom is in obeying Jesus. And the awesome thing is, when you do that, you build your life, Jesus said, on a solid foundation that cannot fall, that will not fall. Are you a wise person? Would you say Jesus would look at you and say, you're a wise woman, you're a wise young lady, you're a wise young man, you're a wise man, because you're building on my foundation. Here Jesus is saying, it's the person who obeys. 
who builds their life. And therefore, not only will you build your life for eternity with him, but let me tell you, any one of you who will follow Christ and obey his word, not only you'll build your eternal life spiritually, but you build your marriage on a solid rock. You will build your children on a solid rock. You will build your relationships on solid rock. You'll build many things on a solid foundation. Friends, because Christ is the solid rock, you cannot build on him and not be solid. He's faithful. Build your life on him. And when the testings of life comes upon you, what does he say? When the rain and the floods, right? He says, when the testings of life come upon you, and let me tell you, the testings of life will come upon you. And they have come upon many of you these few years, have they not? We have been beaten and uh, tested and tried like fire, right? The testings of life will come from all direction, right? Like the rain, they'll come from above, right? Like the floods, they'll come and rise up. Like the wind, they'll come across and beat on us. Jesus said, they will come. Testings will come, even for those who believe and follow me. And they will beat on your life. The floods of financial, relational, and health trials. They will come, and they will beat on your life. But guess what he says? You will stand if you have made me your foundation by following me and obeying me. No matter what test will come upon you, what trial will come upon you'll be shaken, you'll feel it, you'll be pained, you might hurt, you'll suffer, right? He says, but you will stand. You will not fall because you're built on me and nothing that is built on me can be destroyed because he is indestructible. Amen? He goes on to say, Jesus says that not only you will stand the test of this life, but on the day of judgment, because you follow Jesus, you will stand and pass the entrance exam. You'll pass from death to life. You will have life forevermore. The greatest exam that you will pass, friends, is not here. It's when you stand on the day of judgment. And if you've built on Christ, you will live forever. You will not fall when you appear before Jesus because you've believed in him. You've trusted in him. You will pass the greatest exam of all. But it has to happen what? In this life. It's too late when you die. You've got to make your decision for Jesus now. Finally, as we come to verse 26. Now everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them, they will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came. And the winds blew and beat on that house. And it fell, and great was its fall. Pretty scary words, friends. I tell you what, I know many people who are building their lives on the sand. They're building their spiritual life on the sand. They're building their marriage on the sand. They're building their kids on the sand. And it will fall. And great will be its fall. You know why great will be its fall? Because that person will not inherit eternal life. That's the greatest fall of all. This person did not build his life on obedience to Jesus and his word. But on his own philosophy. And his own religious beliefs. On good works of miracles and teaching and serving God. Which is all sinking sand if Jesus is not our foundation. Instead of the solid foundation of Jesus, this person built it on the sand. The sand of his own way, of his own thinking and belief. Others today might build their life on the sand of a saint. And please forgive me. If I sound harsh, but I have to be loving enough to speak truth. Because one day I'll stand and I will give an account to God. Please hear me what I'm saying. Others will build their life on a saint, a beautiful saint like Mary or St. Charbel or some other saint. They will build their life on these people instead of God, the son, the savior. You see, they're beautiful people. 
Mary is a wonderful mother of our Lord Jesus, the virgin, the holy, great example. Every saint, right? And we want to look at them as great examples. But they cannot save us because there's only one Savior. And I cannot risk my life in anyone else but Jesus. And therefore, we need to build our life on Jesus and only Jesus because there is only one Savior that God sent and his name is is Jesus. And if we build it on anyone or anything else, it is sinking sand, my dear brothers. Because they are not God. There is only one God. While others build their life on the sinking sand of doing good works or false religious uh, religions, a lot of people believe in false religions, false faith like the new age spirituality. It's like a small, I believe what I like. I want to believe God in the way I want. Well, guess what, friends? That's sinking sand. God says what you want to believe. Says God says, you believe my way. <laughs> Your way will not lead to life. God is the one that chooses which way we go, not us. Others build on pleasure, on money, on fame, and other things. But all these things, the Bible says, are sinking sand and cannot give us eternal life. And Jesus says, guess what? The person who builds not on me and not on obeying me is like a fool. Friends, the Bible, when it talks about a fool, you know what a fool is in the Bible? It's someone who does not follow God. It says the fool has said in his heart there is no God. That's what the psalm says. Friends, to be wise is to follow Christ. To be foolish is to do it our own way. To do what we think is right instead of what God says is right. And today, be wise. God is calling us to build on his solid foundation. Wisdom is when we follow Jesus. Foolishness is to build on anything else other than Jesus. And in the end, it says great will be that person's fall. What a fall to get to heaven one day and to be told, depart from me. I never knew you. I pray that none of you here today will hear those words because each one of you will make a decision to build on Jesus Christ. Let me finish with this. The famous uh, Beethoven was one of the greatest musicians of all times. Uh, when he taught music, uh, he, was known, he was known for his strict condition. He told his students that they may choose whatever instruments they wanted to play and they could choose whatever song uh, they wanted, and some other things that they can do as well. But only on one condition. And if they did not obey his condition, they could not be his students. This condition was that they must play only his tune. They must only play his tune. And Jesus today is saying, you've got to play my tune. Not your tune or the tune of the world or the tune of any other religion. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Whoever comes to me will not perish but have eternal life. Amen? Why don't we pray? Let's pray. If God has spoken to you, let's bow our heads, close our eyes. If God has spoken to you right now through his word, I want to encourage you to make a commitment to follow him as your Lord and Savior. To build today, to make a decision, to build on a solid foundation. The foundation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Where you don't just call him Lord, Lord, but you submit to him as your Lord today. You obey him as your Lord today. You believe in him as your Lord today. If that's you, if you want to go from judgment to eternal life, then pray a small, short prayer in your heart with me and mean it from your heart. It doesn't guarantee to save you, but if the commitment is genuine, God will honor that and will lead you to eternal life as you make that commitment. So if you want today to commit your life to Jesus, if you want to surrender your life to him, then pray this prayer of commitment. Pray after me.
Father God, thank you that you love me. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying on the cross for my sins. Please forgive me for all my sins from when I was born till now. I turn from living my way to living your way. I commit myself to following you, obeying you as my Lord and my Savior from today. Please cleanse me and wash me from all my sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, for everyone who prayed that prayer, I pray for them right now. If you've prayed that prayer, just keep your heads down and your eyes closed. If you've prayed that prayer, I want to pray for you. Just lift your hand and I just want to pray for you. If you've prayed that prayer, okay? Yeah. Father, I just pray for each person that prayed that prayer. I pray that they will experience you and encounter you. I pray that they will open up your word and find out who you are and live to follow you. I pray this for each person, that your spirit will change them and cause them to fall in love with you. May they know your great love for them today. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.